for the past 18 years that I have been working in the field of diversity and inclusion is that I find different groupings of people. Firstly, they are unconsciously biased but willing. They are those people who are unconsciously biased but are willing to do the work. They are not aware of the extent of their bias and its impact on others. Uh, but they are willing to introspect and do some inner work to improve relationships. For me, I, I'd rather work with people who are saying, yes, you know, after we've sensitized that, wow, I didn't know how unconsciously biased I am, uh, but I'm willing to do the work. And then you have a second group. They're unconsciously biased, but in denial. Okay. Um, these are those who believe that they have... Yes, they had unconscious bias, but they said, we've long worked on this thing, Nini. I've moved on. We've, we are fine now. We've worked on this thing. So, and, and, and you know, I'm, I'm beyond these things. You know some of the words that people use? And then you have the consciously biased, explicitly so. People who are racist, sexist, homophobic, all the isms that you know, and they know it as well. So um, that is why we must never confuse when we're talking about unconscious bias. We must never confuse or excuse the consciously biased because they are there. Um, so this is people who say everyone for himself or herself. Um, I got here purely on merit. And um, I did my own hard work. Only the lazy complaint of discrimination. Just work hard and you will sort out any discrimination. Um, or leave the past behind. Just forget about the past. If there's one thing that presses a button, I think it's that one. Because, no, I, I'm just offering free information. That <laughs> if there's one thing that presses a button is to say forget the past. Because how do you forget the past when you haven't worked through issues? It's like driving a car without a rear view mirror. You know, you need to check uh, what, what is it that, that, so that you don't repeat the same mistake. Another um, um, aspect that I want to share with you is some of the unintended consequences of this work. You find the whole aspect of internalized oppression. It is there where people have bought the story, where women have bought the story, or black people have bought the story, or whatever minority group have bought the story, the negative messages about themselves, and they are even transferring them just like that. When you find a woman in a panel, we actually have a video in our workshop, a woman in a panel commenting about a, another woman saying she was arrogant, she was whatever, and when you check that where is the arrogance? Because you've bought the story that when a woman is assertive, she is arrogant. And sometimes you get it from the people who should know better. So why, why this work is important that this work is important for white people, for black people, for women, for men, because we need to do our internal work. Why? Because, you know, it is said that at six years old, implicit attitudes in children are already formed. Everything else is filtered through that. When your child is about six, seven years old, whatever discussions and narrative at home, they've already formed those implicit attitudes. When you talk to people who are different from you in a demeaning way, whatever, they pick up. They see that. Some of the subliminal messages that they get from the media, that's what happens to kids. So it's important to know that as young people, we don't have work, we, we don't have to do work only in the workplace. At home, all of us, each and every one of us, we need to, when you hear your child say something about people who are different, something that is a stereotype, nip it right there, correct it right there, because these things build up. So, um, and then you also have what we call transformation fatigue, yo. <laughs> Just last week, I ran a workshop where a senior black woman says to me, Nini, really? 2017, you're still talking about making white people understand and all that. I'm, I've had it. I'm, I'm out of here. I've had it. You get, you know, picture this. You're having all those different perspectives in the same workshop. That, the complexity of that dialogue. So for me, you get people who said, I've worked too long. They, this is not changing. Don't come to me about this diversity thing of yours. At the same time, do you know the signals that I see, though? That even if she says that, she's still in the room. 
There is something about her that wants to work it through. Because I said, if you were so angry, you would be in your office. You wouldn't even come here. So it's, it's a genuine frustration that people have about transformation fatigue, that for years and years, you've been trying to say the same thing, but you think that something is not changing. That after 23 years, are we still talking and not doing, OK? And then you have the paralysis. Those people who say, this is too overwhelming. you expecting too much, even if I'm a leader. It's too overwhelming. I don't know enough. I just can't get it right. It's like I'm working on eggshells. I'm afraid when I manage performance of a black person, I'll be called racist. Or You know, that it, it can be complex. I'm not just making up these. So just to show you that the work that we need to do is truly important. So people say, I'd rather keep quiet. So there's a dynamic tension here. What do we need to get right? Ability to count progress without discounting the work that still needs to be done. One of the most frustrating things about the work on transformation is when people don't identify progress. And there are organizations where there's a lot of progress, where they have shifted. So the fear is that if I say my organization has done well, it's almost like I'm saying they must stop here. But it's important to identify where there are pockets of excellence, where there has been progress that has been made. And this is what we don't do enough. And it's important to really do it. Accepting that transformation fatigue and self-care does not mean that you have bailed out. Um, because sometimes if you re reach this fatigue level, take care of yourself rather than intoxicate everybody else. Maybe take care of yourself. Take a pause for a minute. I've also had some kind of emotionally immigrated for a while and come back uh, because of this work. So you, you can do that, but it's important to continue because we can't all throw in the towel. In all of this, what I have found encouraging is that I have come across many leaders who are doing good work. I have come across black people, Indian colored, white people, men and women, who are truly wanting to do work around, around this uh, 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 diversity and inclusion. It is not everybody who says, I'm not interested. And I think, let us rather identify those allies. Let us work with people who are wanting to create a better, uh, transformed and inclusive South Africa, because I think we can all do it.